guys, what's up? Welcome to the vlog. I'm just gonna start saying vlog now uh, because I wanna make more videos like this and they're not all gonna be full day of eating videos. <laughs> but uh, here's my breakfast. It's like day six of, of Whole30, which it feels like it's been longer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this is just banana with almond butter and one egg, four egg whites. And uh, I'm a creature of habit, so my breakfast generally stays the same. Um, I don't know, we'll see. If I switch it up, you'll find out. But today's leg day, so I'm gonna take you to the gym with me and uh, hit a leg workout and then see where the day goes, do some work. Pretty average, boring day. Thank you for joining in and um, I'll see you in a bit. Just want to give you all a glance uh, of what I get to look at every morning while I work and drink my coffee. Just, uh, yeah, I have a lot of anxiety, but this is like the only thing that just calms me down and like everything is going to be okay. <laughs> Sunrise is my favorite part of the day, so welcome to my favorite part of the day. <laughs> Getting ready to head to the gym. Someone asked me if I do pre-workout or how much fluid intake I do each day. And I haven't honestly been counting. I fill this up a couple times a day, so I'm going to assume I drink like two of these. <laughs> uh, also, generally, yes, uh, I will do a pre-workout. Although pre-workout is also full of artificial ingredients that are not allowed during this, this whole 30 phase, but also, um, you know, I'm kind of trying out how I feel without it. It's inflammation wise, I think that I've noticed a little bit of a difference in how my joints feel after taking pre-workout. So that is definitely something to consider outside of this month of just no artificial ingredients, whole 30 type, type of eating. But uh, yeah. Water is good, makes me feel better when I'm more hydrated. Uh, being dehydrated can make you feel weaker and kind of sluggish and tired, so drink up, folks. All right, time for me to head to the gym to hit my leg workout, and uh, hope I can grow these legs. <laughs> so I just started out by doing some stretches, made sure to stretch my quads. I generally run pretty tight, especially my left, since I had uh, knee surgery, a high tibial osteotomy back in June. Uh, so it's been a struggle to actually get my range of motion back all the way in my left leg. And uh, it's almost there, but not quite. And here I'm just making sure, making sure to open up my hips a little bit, uh, pressing up my arms against my legs. It's a weird movement. <laughs> uh, then I just stretched my hamstrings again, sitting on the ground. As you can see, I just held it here for a good like 30 seconds and then I switch and I can't, <laughs> I can't put my leg, my other leg down yet post knee surgery. I'm like trying, I'm like, hey, maybe I get, nope. Uh, it just hurts and it hurts my medial meniscus, whatever is left with it, left of it, but whatever. My knee isn't completely 100% still, so that's kind of the frustrating part. And I've had to take a lot of time from being able to work on my legs 100%, because even pre-surgery, everything was just making my knee swell. Uh, it was tough times. I was trying to do at least lightweight higher reps, but my knee was very angry for quite some time. So my surgery helped in the sense of it's not getting as swollen when I'm doing things, so that's nice. And then I just moved over to lunges, weighted lunges with the uh, barbell thingy here, just to get a little bit warmed up before I headed over to the squat rack. So this is 185 pounds. And I did work up to this, just if you're wondering, I didn't just throw myself into squatting 185 pounds. Uh, I did 
10 reps of these for five sets, which I was pretty stoked about because in September, I was only able to squat the bar for the first time since surgery. So to be able to squat this for 10 reps for five rounds, I was pretty happy with it. Nothing crazy for a lot of people out there, but for me, this was a PR. This was this was a good, it was a milestone for me. I was feeling a little, a little bit stronger than I've been feeling lately. After this, I moved over to some good mornings. I just had uh, 25 pounds on each side and uh, these are just kind of an awkward movement, but uh, it's I'm trying to make sure to balance out my hamstrings along with my quads. A lot of the times people are really quad dominant and they don't focus enough on their hamstrings. So trying to balance it out each movement with like a hamstring movement of some sort. And then also um, I do deadlifts on my back days. So that's also working my hamstrings. And this is a calf raise. And if you don't have a standing calf machine at your gym, this is a good substitute for it. I think a lot of people get lost. They're like, oh, I don't have a calf machine. What can I substitute? Uh, if you have a Smith machine, then you can stack some weights up underneath you and uh, put some weight on the bar and use that as the weight and it works just fine. So yeah. And I moved over to the leg press and I'm doing single leg press because I do still have some strength differences between my right and left leg. Uh, and I, you know, since I've noticed this, I'm sure I am compensating in some way or another while I'm squatting, which isn't necessarily good. I'm probably creating some muscle imbalances. So I try to balance it out when I can by doing some more single leg exercises. And I feel a little bit of pressure still on my left leg from the high tibial osteotomy. Uh, it's a little bit weird, but it's not painful, it's just weird. I did 12 reps of each leg on this for four sets. Pretty much everything else in this workout is four sets, 12 reps, besides the squat I did five rounds for. So this is the line hamstring curl. This is my favorite because I feel like it really activates my hamstrings. Uh, the seated hamstring curl is great, but it nothing gets it like this one. So I'm super stoked that my gym has this machine. Not all gyms do. It's funny, this felt a lot harder to me then when I watch it back, I'm like, it looks too easy, but it did not feel too easy. <laughs> um, but yeah, just trying to gain back that leg strength. Next time I do legs, I will probably be doing single leg uh, extensions just to make sure I can kind of, you know, fill out, balance out my legs a little bit and make sure the right isn't forever stronger. Uh, I threw in some shoulder exercises. I just did some lateral raises because in comparison to my front delt, my lateral delt and my rear delt are, are lagging to me. So I just threw some in here at the end of my workout, just 12 reps, four sets, just to be like, okay, I'm gonna hit this lagging body part because I don't wanna be weird and not symmetrical with my shoulders. So I'm just gonna work on those for me a little bit. And that is it for this workout. Thank you for watching. So that's it for today's leg workout. Um, this is the gym that I train out of now. So you should come train with me. It's, it's fun stuff. It's not all like crowded and stuff. And uh, yeah, training information is down below if you are interested and you're in the Rockland, California area. Now, it's time to go home and eat. All right, so before I get into the food porn portion of this video, I'm gonna go over like what I'm doing basically. So what I've got for lunch here, I'm also cooking part of my dinner at the same time, so pro tip if you wanna save time, cook off bigger amounts of protein than you need for that time and so you can save it for later. And that's my oven beeping. Uh, so I'm gonna sear off these chicken breasts and I'm gonna be seasoning it with curry powder 
and salt. And so I'm just gonna be searing it in the pan and then finishing it in the oven because they're a little thick to be just finishing in the pan. Uh, then I've got some red cabbage that I'm gonna saute. And then I've got my pre-baked sweet potatoes. So they're already cooked, but I like to throw them in the pan and crisp, crisp them up in some oil and it just tastes amazing. Uh, so yeah, that is it. Time to get cooking and on to the food porn. So this is lunchtime. I'm starving, so I'm gonna eat and then do some work and then probably just see you back at dinner time because that's all I do is work out and eat. So uh, yeah, just kidding, I work too. I have some clients I gotta, gotta do some schedules for and all that stuff. So I'm gonna get to that. Carly's going to attack her skunk. <laughs> see you in a bit. It's officially dinner time and uh, I've already got everything prepped out, I'll show you what I am I'm dealing with for dinner. It's such a quick meal that it's not even food porn worthy, so I'm just gonna cook it real time and uh, maybe have a little chat in the meantime. We'll see how, how it goes. I'm a little ADD, so I don't know if I'll be able to focus, but here we go. So this is what we got prepped out. This is called mise en place, which means to put in place. It is a French culinary term. So this is a pro tip. If you wanna make cooking quick, make sure to have things ready to go. So we've got the chicken from lunch, roasted beets, uh, zucchini, and some fresh minced garlic right here. So I am just going to go ahead, light this up, and start cooking. So first things first, we gotta choose a cooking oil. And I've got olive oil over there, I've got coconut oil, and I have ghee. Uh, I'm going to use coconut oil this time, but if you're wondering, ghee is basically butter with all the milk solids removed, so it's got a higher smoke point, it's lactose free, so if you can't do milk, you can probably do ghee. And it's really, really tasty, honestly, but uh, going with coconut, it also has a, sm uh, a higher smoke point than olive oil. Olive oil tends to burn pretty easily, so I reserve olive oil for salads and stuff like that. So, in goes the coconut oil into the pan. Whoa. And don't forget, if you have an iron skillet, these handles get really hot, 
so you might want to buy one of these little rubber handle thingies silicone handle things if you want to be able to actually touch this without burning your hand off then what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put the zucchini into the pan and make sure my pan is hot enough I don't know if you could see this on here but you see those streaks in the pan with the oil that's when you know your pan is ready to go you hear that sizzle? Yep. So we'll just let that saute a little bit. And then I'll add in the garlic and all that stuff. But this is going to be sauteing for a bit. So while this is sauteing, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to discuss something that I've been thinking about. So I was having a conversation with a client the other day, and we were talking about Whole30. Uh, she happens to also be doing Whole30. Hopefully the, the sound of this is not too loud for the microphone. Uh, but we were talking about how if you just change your perspective or your mindset around Whole30 or just any sort of lifestyle change, workout plan, diet in general, Instead of focusing on what you are taking out of your life, uh, you have to think about it in a sense of like what you're gifting yourself or in a self-care kind of manner. And on another note, self-care can tend to be something that I feel like we could use that word to mask our fear sometimes and actually use it to take us into a, a stage of procrastination or just letting a fear consume us and then labeling it as self-care. That's probably another topic, but it's kind of tied into the same thing. Last one. Uh, <laughs> so, when you're thinking of things like Whole30, you have to think about not what you're taking out of your life, but what you're actually gifting yourself. With Whole30, You've committed to 30 days. It's just 30 days, let me remind you that. Uh, you've committed to 30 days, so you're gifting yourself the ability to put trust in yourself that you're going to commit to it. So you're committing to something. You're keeping a commitment to yourself. You're showing yourself that you can stick to something, and it's empowering. So you're gifting yourself empowerment, and then you're also gifting yourself, gifting your body, the nutrients that it needs. There's not much better than gifting your body nutrient-dense food. It's what it needs, it's what it craves. I mean, your taste buds and your brain might crave sugar because, you know, our, you know, the whole dopamine response. But in reality, we need protein, we need vegetables, we need whole foods that sort of thing. The other stuff has a place in time. Uh, you know, we need breaks. We need, uh, you know, sometimes we just do better with balance instead of just removing a lot of things from our life. But uh, sometimes self-care is doing the hard things. Sometimes self-care is uh, getting out of bed in the morning and going to the gym. Sometimes self-care is practicing discipline or resistance when it comes to eating certain types of food. If your goal is to be healthier all around and you've set out goals for yourself in the new year, self-care could be what is going to get you closer to that goal. Not necessarily going by how you feel in the moment and you know using self-care as a mask to not do something you don't want to do. So, on that note, I just added the garlic and some salt. So now, I'm gonna add the chicken. And basically, it's done. I'm just gonna like, be warming it up. So yeah, on a rambly story short, 
don't confuse self-care for allowing yourself to escape discipline. Uh, don't use self-care to as an excuse. Uh, I would say, think about it before, like if you're sitting in bed and you're like, I could really use just to stay in bed and not do anything today besides watch Netflix. Think about, in the long term, what is going to get you to the life that you want to get to? What is going to get you closer to your goal? Is it going to be staying in bed? Or is it going to be going to the gym or meal prepping and stuff like that? So that is my speech for the day. This is done. So I'm going to get off my high horse and get to dinner. Okay, so one last step. I ended up tossing a little, a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper in with the beets. Now I'm just going to place them in the bowl. Like so. So there is dinner. Pretty simple. So all in all, what I'm trying to say with this rant is a lot of the times why people fail at their goals is that they don't focus on what they're gifting themselves. They focus on what they feel like they're taking away or what they're depriving themselves of. And uh, you just got to focus on the positive aspects of it. If you really have these goals and you really want this for yourself, you're gifting yourself this. Yeah, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna eat my dinner and see you what, when, when I eat something else. I don't know. Thanks for listening. So, my friend Joey gifted me these champagne glasses for my birthday, and they kind of just make me feel fancy all the time. Pro tip, if you have a hard time drinking water, sometimes using different glasses will encourage you to drink more. I don't know, it's weird. I mean, also, you know, carbonated uh, doesn't hurt either. I, I love this stuff. It's just carbonated water with an orange, a, a tint of orange. Uh, so. Yeah. Cheers. Anyways, on that note, I'm gonna end the vlog here because my dog. <laughs> Every time I start talking, she just goes crazy on the skunk. <laughs> oh man. Crazy dog. Anyways. I'm gonna end the vlog here because honestly, I'm about to eat the same thing that I made in the end of the last video. So if you really wanna know, go back to that video and see what I made for like my last meal dessert sort of thing. Carly, shush. <laughs> Anyways, there's gonna be more videos like this in the, Carly, stop. Give me, give me that, give me that. All right, so there's probably gonna be a lot more videos that are similar to this one. Uh, I just wanna be able to pick up the camera more. I just want to document this aspect of my life, which is my journey back to the bodybuilding stage. And I'm like excited about it, but I'm also really nervous. <laughs> but um, this is where, you know, it's gonna start I'm looking at October and uh, I'm gonna do my best. My physique is not gonna be like, technically, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not where I wanna be. So we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm gonna work my ass off and uh, I'm gonna present the best physique that I can come up with from now until October. Uh, so yeah, I hope you join along in that journey with me. Uh, if you find these videos helpful, give them a thumbs up. Or if you don't wanna miss another one, make sure to hit subscribe and uh if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below peace out and i will see you next time